this time, I'm marooned on an island in the South China Sea. Trapped by towering cliffs, it's the smallest location I've ever tried to thrive in. I didn't come here to sit in a space the size of a quarter of a football pitch. With no way out, my situation quickly becomes desperate. I need water today, I really need water. Hunger drives me to some difficult eating decisions. <laughs> it's so bitter, it's inedible. And when illness wipes me out, I fear my challenge could be over. A darkness, a pain, a fear, the hardest thing I have ever, ever done. I'm Ed Stafford. I've walked the length of the Amazon and survived on a desert island with only a camera to film my adventure. Ah! Now, I've set myself a new challenge to prove I can make it in some of the world's toughest environments. Oh, my God. Using only what I find around me. Already had a kidney and a bit of liver. I'll be left completely alone for 10 days with nothing. Words cannot describe how I feel right now. No film crew. No food, no water. The sun is directly overhead, it's boiling hot. Not even a knife. Right, coming out, get a move on. This time, it's about more than just survival. I want to see if I can thrive yes. anywhere. Philippines, and I'm on a tiny little boat making my way around the coast of an island to get to a bay where I'm going to be dropped off. The Philippines is made up of more than 7,000 islands. I'm up in the northwest of the country, heading to an uninhabited stretch of coastline on Caron Island. At the moment, I have to say, this looks really ominous. It's just sheer cliffs going straight down into the ocean. Um, it's a beautiful day, but the island looks ridiculously barren. This landscape immediately brings back bad memories. Three years ago, I fulfilled a lifelong ambition and spent 60 days marooned on a desert island, and it nearly broke me. I, I have these waves, waves of fierce, fierce panic. Stupid, get a grip, what's wrong with you? So I know how tough coastal environments can be. I haven't braved an island again. Until now. This is going to be an interesting project. It really is. That's my beach. My mission isn't just to survive here, it's to thrive. I'm worried that the beach looks too small to provide even the basics. Let's get this plug out. I need to focus and stay positive. This is going to be a challenge. OK, that's the last I'll see of anybody for well over a week. Thank you, Abby. Thank you, mate. Take care. Look at this place. <laughs> oh my God. I have four key priorities. I don't think shelter's gonna be a problem and food and fire can wait. In this heat, water is the number one priority. The good news is, you see he's lying in the sand and immediately there's coconuts that's got fluid in it. That's my first drink. Water is key. Daily temperatures of 32 degrees Celsius mean dehydration is a real risk. But there are other dangers to contend with here. Snakes, scorpion fish, and sharks, to name but a few. OK, in my bag. I've got an emergency first aid kit. I've got a tripod. I've got a spare camera. I've got both an emergency satellite phone and a VHF radio for comms, and including the one on my head, I've got three point of view cameras. But importantly, I haven't got, I haven't got any food. I haven't got a knife. I haven't got any clothes, apart from my pair of shorts that I'm wearing. I have, however, got half a brain and a pair of hands. So, 
I'm actually just looking around the beach and although it's stunning, it's filthy. This is disgusting. When I was marooned on Olorua, I got used to rubbish washing up on the beach. But this is much worse. Let's put a downer on things, I have to say. Look at this. It's a fluorescent light bulb. This is the state of the world today. There's an old satchel, there's broken flip-flops, there's loads of broken up polystyrene foam. Everything from a survival perspective is telling me this is good news. The stuff that you can use that's gonna help you survive and everything from a heart perspective is just disgusted and deeply saddened, I suppose, by by the state of this beach is horrible. It is absolutely littered in rubbish. But this rubbish is a survival asset. I can use these bottles for storing water and other debris for catching fish. Put this very normal bottle up and um, you can see attached to it is fishing line. Now, I want to see what the natural environment has to offer here. There's definitely fruit. That's papaya tree. That is very cool, that's food. <laughs> and bamboo, always useful for building. But what it doesn't have, unless I'm being really stupid, is uh, fresh water. But I do have coconuts. They're nature's sports drink, full of electrolytes and great at rehydrating my body. Ah. Done. Ah, feel better now. Um, I love coconut. <laughs> I really, really love coconut. I'm a bit obsessed with coconut. But I only have one, two, three, four, five coconuts left, so I need to ration them. It's the dry season. I won't thrive here unless I find another source of water. On the plus side, there's no need for a shelter but I do want a bed. What I'm doing is putting green palms down first and then brown ones that have fallen from the coconut trees. And um, the theory being that the green ones will be a bit more springy and provide comfort for the bed, but the brown ones are drier, so they'll be warmer to lie on than the, than the green ones. So these ones are going on top. I may have been dropped off quite late in the evening, but I'm absolutely exhausted. The um, sun roasted me on the uh, boat. And uh, one coconut doesn't seem a lot to drink at all. I feel dehydrated, I feel heavy, my limbs feel heavy. Already, already. Only been here a few hours. But this bed is good, it's level. The sand below it is very, very dry. And it's now got a nice comfy mattress of coconut palm. But I can't sleep. Lying on a beach alone is reminding me of the last time I was marooned on a desert island. Olorua was an intense experiment to be dropped on a desert island for 60 days with no contact with anybody and it would be fair to say it was the most difficult thing I've ever done in my entire life. I, I've almost, almost welling up saying that. It was the hardest thing I have ever, ever done. The loneliness and starvation were unbearable. And I suffered physically and mentally for a long time afterwards. Absolutely exhausted. The end of my tether. I need water, I need water, I need water, I need water. Yes! Yes, 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 yes. I'm really questioning why I've come to another island. Morning. That was um, 
that was the worst night's sleep I've ever had. <sighs> Too exhausted to film. At first, I think I'm just tired. But now, I'm also beginning to feel really unwell. I've developed a fever and I've got no energy. With no water, I'm also in danger of dehydrating, so I try and stay out of the sun. But it's become painfully clear that there's something wrong with my knee. Um, I've got some sort of infection. An infected cut has turned into cellulitis, a bacterial skin infection. I cut it when I was trying to get in over the... Um... I've been hospitalised with it once before. Untreated, it can become life-threatening. So I make an emergency radio call to my expedition medic. Alright, uh, today's over. I have a fear around the lymph node area. Um, I might just give, a, give me an indication as to whether they're elevated on either left or right side over. He instructs me to take a massive dose of antibiotics from my emergency medical kit. If they don't work, I'll need to be evacuated from the island. You're meant to take one three times a day. I'm going to take two three times a day for the first. 24 hours because um, I need to get rid of this first. In this heat and fighting an infection, I need at least a litre of water a day. But I'm too weak to start looking and I'm forced to drink another of my precious coconuts. If I don't get better before I run out of coconut water, it'll be game over. As I face my second night on the island, once again, I'm too worried to sleep. Morning. Um, right. I've woken up and I'm... I, I think I'm feeling better. I'd say my knee doesn't look any worse. I think the antibiotics might be working, but I still have another serious concern. I'm still slightly at my wit's end as to what to do about water. Um, but I've still got coconuts. I've got three coconuts left. That's enough for today and tomorrow morning. So I don't really know what to do about water. Um, I suppose it is a case of exploring the coastline. The first thing to try is papaya. Fruit will give me energy and it's a little hydrating as well. Oh, these aren't ripe at all. It's milky, milky sap and it smells like washing up liquid. I can even vaguely recognise the taste but That is so bitter, it's inedible. <coughs> With coconut flesh around, I'm not eating that. Not in a million years. That is a setback. I keep foraging for food and water, but I need fire too. A rusty old nail gives me an idea. The theory, very simply, is that if I put the the nail in to the bottle, point first, and then shake it up and down gently. Essentially that it should make minute fractures all around the outside of the bottle. That should eventually mean that the whole of the bottom comes off in one piece. I think it's getting close. <laughs> Look at that. That's beautiful. <laughs> Now this is what I'm going to use to try and start my fire. I've made a magnifying glass. 
now I can use the same method as school kids the world over to start my fire. That's producing a nice little spot. If I can make this work, I'll be able to cook food and purify water, if I manage to find any. Ow! That's hot. With the sun high in the sky, now is the time to do it. Position at the perfect height so that it... Um... It's going. It's going. <laughs> I've got a fire going. I've got a fire going. <laughs> Ah, nice one. So nice not to have to break a sweat to get a fire going. Uh, right, OK, add more wood. Having a fire burning in my camp is a real psychological boost. That little flicker of orange just down there. It's the difference. It's the difference between civilization and scrabbling around. I'm in such a beautiful, wonderful place. Now for food. Rock pools exposed at low tide are a perfect starting point. They should be full of shrimps, crabs, snails and fish. Yes, first bit of protein. I know it's alive because I saw, I saw it go back inside its shell. There's quite a few of them, a couple at least. I've got a fire going. I've got about six crabs in my pocket. They're little hermit crabs, but six of them is not bad. Where did I see that can? There's a can back here. There's a can round here. <laughs> Whatever you need, this beach has got it. To get a bigger stone. <clears throat> I might have found food, but sometimes it's hard to get the packaging off. Ha! <laughs> you are fairly tough, aren't you? I'll cook the crabs in seawater, and as long as I don't drink it, the salt on the food will replace the salt I've lost from sweating. That's a salt explosion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. But then there's meat. There's meat through it. Oh, that's good. That's a good way to end the day. What a day. And suddenly, I realise I don't have to be haunted by the ghosts of the past anymore. I think this is a turning point. I think... I think this morning when I woke up was a turning point, actually. Survival psychology... It's all about being in better control of your mind state. And for me, I could feel an illogical panic coming on. A, um, a darkness, a pain, a fear, a sadness. I've got to be honest, a sadness. I could feel that coming on. And then I just thought, that's not, that's not here and now. That was three years ago. This is a completely fresh project. This is a completely new challenge at a time when you're older and wiser and more experienced and in a better place. I wouldn't trade that experience for anything in the world because as tough as it was, as tough as it was, I learned so much from it about myself that has enabled me to be a far stronger man. Hmm. And with that, I get my first good night's sleep. Day four, and for the first time, I feel ready to do battle with Karan Island. I urgently need to find water, 
and exploring my surroundings should increase my chances. There's a whole fishing net there. A whole fishing net. My brain's just going for all the different things I could use this for. Except, I mean, let's face it, it's extraordinarily useful. It's an amazing find, but it's not instant fish. It'll need some thinking as to how I utilize it. This can't distract me from the task in hand. My search for water. The tide is still out, and as we wade across the bay, I make an intriguing discovery. There's a hidden channel cutting through the rocks. Inland uh, river. It winds up. <laughs> Whoa! Oh my god. I have found a secret lagoon. Look at that. Look at that. Look, that's where I've just come from. You can only just see the sea in the distance through that little crack. And it opens up into this. This spectacular lagoon could be rich in resources and the first good news comes with spikes on. Wow, and that's food. If I can get past the spines, I'm going to eat this live. Because in the heat, urchins decay very quickly. You only eat the gonads, which are the orange bits. They're packed with protein. So I can keep harvesting these and munching on them whenever I like. Not only are urchins a great source of protein, they're also loaded with vitamins, a healthy dose of omega oils, and calcium too. After my urchin feast, I spot something that could change everything. There's a sort of mangrove swamp just over there. Now, mangrove could mean that there's water running down the gully that's above it. This could be my last chance. I've got no coconuts left. If I don't find water in the gully, my time on Koron Island will end in failure. I need water today, I really need water. I'm Ed Stafford, and I'm trying to thrive on Koron Island in the Philippines. I've sorted fire and food, but dehydration is becoming a real threat. Close to defeat, I've spotted signs of fresh water on the far side of a deep hidden lagoon, if I can get to it. I need to make myself a flotation device, three bits of bamboo, um, with a bit of netting in the middle and I can cut a bit of this fishing net off and use that um, to act as a platform. If I find water, I'll need the flotation device to carry bottles. With no machete, I'm using fire to cut these bamboo pieces to size. The beach is littered with string, but it's all old and brittle. I need to go back to nature to find strong vines instead. Unlike the blue cordage, I cannot snap that. The sharp edge of my bottle magnifying glass is great for cutting up the net. Add a few polystyrene floats, and my vessel is complete. This place is just utterly stunning. I've got my raft. I'm ready to cross. I need water today. I really need water. 
Okay, go. Everything's sorted. Just go. Oh, oh, oh. It's actually very cold in here. About to get to the point. Yeah. I am so apprehensive in the water. I really don't like it at all. Whatever might lurk in this lagoon, I have no choice but to cross it on my quest for water. It's a relief to be back on dry land again, even if it is a muddy mangrove swamp. Ah, <laughs> it's like another world. It's a little lost world in here. This is extraordinary. I'm interested in the tree-lined gully. It might have been carved by running water. Incredible. I think all of this, all of the earth beneath my feet is bone dry though. Doesn't look that promising. It looks pretty dry to me. <clears throat> okay, I've climbed quite a way above the lagoon and so far there's no sign of water and it is bone, bone dry. Not a hint of water. This lack of water is getting serious. I haven't drunk anything today, but food will give me some fluids and the mangroves could be a good place to find something. That little grub lives in mangroves. That taste of oysters. Oh, that tastes delicious. That's like sweet oysters. Oh, right, let's smash open some more mangrove. That is absolutely amazing. That, I thought it was the back half. It was hiding in the other half of the wood. It's called a tamilock worm, although they're actually a type of clam. They bore into wet wood, and in the Philippines, they're a delicacy. There's a, oh, crikey. The back half is a good bit. <laughs> that's, um, that's got a fair bit of um, wood pulp or sand or something like that in it. <clears throat> I can't continue like this. I have to find water. Going back into the lagoon may reveal other gullies in the cliffs. What I need to do now is pick an area where I can go up and into the rocks and look for little, um, look for little, literally hanging rock pools, stuff that is going to collect rainwater. With so many crevices in the limestone cliffs, I'm convinced there must be rainwater trapped here. Oh. It's beautiful, but. I am, um, I don't care at the moment. I just need to have a drink. Climbing and bare feet. Oh, yes, look, there in that pool, in this, in this indentation in a rock that's sticking out above a lagoon, has to be fresh water. It has to, has to be fresh water. I want to high five myself, but I can't. <laughs> I really actually do want to high five myself. One sec, I'm going to high five myself. Yes. 
there is no way on earth I would drink this now. It's got so many, it must have so many bacteria and rubbish in it. But I've got a fire going. I can, I can filter my water first and then I can boil it. You know, there is no dramas here whatsoever. That's not too bad. That's the, that's the tannin in the leaves that have collected in the pond, pond, in the pool. Cool. I take five litres of water and head home as fast as possible to drink it. Okay, I've got my water, but it's um. It's fairly murky, so I want to filter it, so I'm just going to make myself a filter. First, cut the bottom off the bottle. Use a little bit of cloth and cover the hole. Then, add a layer of sand, a layer of charcoal. Here's uh, charcoal from the fire. A layer of organic matter, and finally, a layer of sand to keep it all in place. That should make the basics of a filter that can get this clean. The sand should remove some of the bigger stuff and charcoal has been used to purify water for hundreds of years. I pour the first bottle through. But to be doubly sure there are no germs, I boil the filtered water too. It's boiling, it's boiling, it's boiling. Water now sorted, I've got fresh rainwater. Once boiled, I can even convince myself it's a wonderful cup of tea. Real survival is not glamorous. <laughs> Real survival is about scrabbling around and going to extraordinary efforts to produce quite trivial results. And uh, what can be more trivial than having a cup of tea? At long last, I've achieved the four survival priorities. Water, fresh water now, a limited supply, enough until the end of this project anyway. I've got food in the forms of the sea urchins and the crabs and everything that I'm foraging around the ocean, that's all good. Shelter I don't need because I'm sleeping here on the beach and um, fire, I've got a nice fat, warm fire over there that's keeping me warm at night. All four survival priorities, done. Now, I need to push things further and see if I can go from surviving to thriving. I think it's really, really important now. Um, I'm running out of time and I need, I need to eat well. I need to eat well before I leave this um, beach. And to do that, I need to go fishing. Once again, the trash comes in useful. This time, for making bottle traps. You take the top of a bottle, you invert it, you push it in, and therefore you create a big aperture that fish can swim in, and a small aperture inside that fish can't swim out and they get stuck inside. I've seen rock pools with lots of fish. They may be small, but if I catch enough of them, they'll be enough to make a hearty meal. So I laid 10 bottle traps. And then on the way back, I finally see something that would make a big meal all on its own. That's a black tip shark. If ever I needed it, that was proof that um, there's food around here. That was a black tip shark that just uh, swam past me. Sharks have been around for more than 400 million years, so I'm going to use one of the oldest style fish hooks on earth, a gorge hook. It goes in in line with the line and then in the stomach as it's tugged, it, because it's anchored off centre, it, it um, splays out in the, in the stomach and it won't come back out of the, of the mouth or it get tangled in the gills. So I've got the vertical line, the gorge hook attached here, and then the orange boy above. 
A hook is only as good as the bait on it, and I should find plenty on the reef. I really don't know what this is. It's, um, the thing is though, it's got meat in it, and I need meat to put on my gorge hook, so I'm gonna smash this open, take out the, um, the meaty lips that you can see, and um, I'm gonna use them as bait. Huge. Surely a shark will go for that. I bait up another five lines, and then I patch up the ragged fishing net that I found a few days ago. I set the net across the entrance to the lagoon to catch fish swimming in or out. Now, all I can do is wait to see what happens. Before sunset, I go and take a look. Nothing in any of the lines tonight, unfortunately. They've all got either limpets or crabs or bits of sea cucumber on them. But nothing is biting. As I feel the panic of another day without a decent meal, I go out to check the net and lines one last time. But there's nothing there. It's my last morning on Koran Island. Fishing needs time to get right but I lost a valuable few days when I was ill, and as I tidy up the traps, I no longer hold out much hope of a catch. Absolutely nothing in the net at all. I'm amazed it stayed in place there. <laughs> okay, let's reel that in. Six lines, one net, ten bottle traps. Oh, I've got a fish. <laughs> and one rather small fish. Literally, the last trap, and I've got a fish. It's like a loach. You see that in the bottom? Hello, mate. Look at that. Ed caught one fish. <laughs> but with a few more ingredients, I should be able to make myself a soup. I know that local tribesmen around here climb the cliffs for swifts' nests. Um, I think they sell them to Japan. They make quite a delicacy and make a soup out of it. So I was just wondering, if I climb in that cave, whether I'd be able to find the, um, the nests. The locals make a good living from the nests. And now, I understand why they're worth so much. They're hard to find and dangerous to get. This is a pretty cool cave. Limestone makes absolutely incredible structures. Apparently these, the white bit is actually the saliva of the bird. And um, in certain parts of the world, these are delicacy. Bird's nest soup goes for a lot of money. And uh, I'm gonna find out, I'm gonna take this back to my camp and have myself bird's nest and fish soup. <laughs> Okay, washed, scaled, and um, totally gutted. This plant here 
behind the camp, I believe, is tamarind. It's not in fruit at the moment, but I'm just going to put some of the leaves in my bird's nest soup to add a bit of um, tamarind flavour. Tamarind is a real find. Its leaves are packed with goodness, and it's great for your guts. Now, the bird's nest, I expected to sort of um, completely disintegrate. And maybe with time, it does. Oh, that tastes quite good, actually. What does it taste like? Um, tastes like noodles, I suppose. Oh, it's a wonderful soup as well. It really feels like I'm putting loads of nutrients into my body. Oh, that was the head of the fish. Amazing. Definitely the best meal since I've been here. This is the first time I've felt on top of the situation. I can't claim to have properly thrived here, but given time, I'm sure my lines, bottle traps and net would catch fish and the rains would bring me water. This place is utterly extraordinary. I'm surrounded by a cathedral of limestone. Limestone turrets shooting up in every direction. They don't care whether I catch a fish or not. <laughs> and then my little beach. In actual fact, it may have a little bit of rubbish on it. But that's idyllic in itself as well, isn't it? That's utterly idyllic. Acceptance. When you set what is, every moment is the best moment. When you fight against it, then you're angry or annoyed or frustrated or pissed off. But when you accept it, life's good. Easier said than done. Desert Island will never be my favourite location. But thanks to my time here, they will no longer hold the same fear for me as they did when I first arrived. Here he is, here he is. <laughs>